Welcome. My name is Allison, and in this video, my goal is to get you working 9 to 5 with Pixel Table for multimodal data in Python. I'm going to show you some early errors that new Pixel Table users like myself have run into and how to fix them. And I'm also going to demonstrate a really productive pattern for building up your Pixel Table interactively using an iterate then add workflow that you can start using right away. The only prerequisite is that you download Pixel Table. But I also recommend you check out our Pixel Table Basics video. It's less than 10 minutes long, and it'll give you a strong foundation to follow up on later. I'm going to start by creating a fresh directory here. I'm calling it Dolly for obvious reasons. And I'm going to start by creating a new table using create underscore table. I'm going to create it in the Dolly directory, and I'm going to name it working. The table is going to have a single column called text, and it's going to be a string variable. I'm going to assign it to a variable D so I can work with it interactively. Great, you can see that I created my table working. And if I list my directories, you can see I have one called Dolly. And if I list my tables, you can see that I have dolly.work in there. Now, heartbreak number one can happen if I try to rerun this code chunk. So this happens a lot if you're working on interactive demos. So the error tells you that the path Dolly work in is an existing table. Now, this is actually a good error. It's preventing me from overwriting a table in my database. If you, in fact, actually want to do that, you can go back up drop the directory and start over, and you won't run into the same error. Another error that can happen is if I try to change this and I change it to say Dolly job. If I run that, I've created a new table called job. I haven't changed my directory structure, but I have added a new table to my list of tables here. Now, this may be a mistake. I can always drop one of them. Let's say I drop Dolly, uh, Dolly job, and then I list my tables again, and I'm back to Dolly.working. Now, I've introduced an error that I'm going to show you now. So let's say I take this table D and I want to insert six rows of lyrics into it. If I run this code chunk, you can see that Pixel Table tells me the table was actually dropped. So what I did was something very confusing for Pixel Table. I created a table called dolly.working. I assigned it to a variable D. Then I used that same variable and assigned it a new table called dolly.job, which I then dropped. So what that means is that dolly.workin still exists, even though I've dropped dolly.job, but it's not attached to the variable D anymore. So the way to fix this error, if I know that dolly.workin still exists, is I can check my D dot underscore path. You can see that, in fact, my table was dropped. It's not attached to D anymore. And I can use get underscore table to reattach dolly.workin to this variable D so I can work with it again. I do that, and if I print the path, you can see that it's all linked up again. And now I can insert my six rows, no problem. I can see that this is a table that has a single column that's a string column called text. And when I do d.collect, you can see that I can see my six lines of text. Now, when you're working with multimodal data, what you're going to want to do is add columns to a database. You're going to want to add columns to be able to process data. You're going to want to add columns to use models. And you're going to want to add columns to be able to make API calls and save the results and the outputs. So the way to do that in Pixel Table is to add a computed column. And here I'm doing this right away by adding it to D. I'm naming it uppercase. And I'm using a simple Python string operator to convert all the characters to uppercase here. Now, if I run that, it works great. And you can see that it's in my table already. So in my dolly.working table, I have this uppercase variable now that I can use and reuse as I work. Now, the problem comes if I decide, oh, I don't actually think that I want this to be upper. I didn't realize that was going to give me all caps. I don't want screaming. I want just title case. So maybe I change this as I'm working interactively, and I try to rerun this code chunk. So what it's going to tell me is that I have a duplicate co column name called uppercase. And that's true. I didn't change the column name here, but I did change the function because I was trying to adapt and work interactively. So the way around this is I can do uh, add a flag called if underscore exists, and I can replace that column. So here, if I run this, you can see that it runs with no problems. I can also change this, and I can run it many times. And if I do d.collect, you can see that I have actually changed the column in my database and I've replaced it with this new function. Now, with great power comes great responsibility. So what Pixel Table wants to do is it wants to protect your database and wants to make it very hard for you to be able to overwrite any of the columns in that database. So just because you can do if exists equals replace, maybe you shouldn't. And I want to really encourage you to test out this other workflow pattern. 
So the other workflow pattern is to write queries instead of adding computed columns right away. So the way we write queries in pixel table is to use select. And you can think of select as a safe sandbox for iterating and experimenting with your code before you actually commit it back to the database. So here I'm showing you d.select, and then I'm doing a collect at the end. And here I'm just selecting a column, which is what you might normally be used to using select for. Usually I use it to select out a subset of columns that I want to iterate on and work with, sort of creating a mini table to be able to work with. So if I run this, you can see that I'm just showing the text column, but I can also add additional columns here. So here I'm adding a lowercase column, a title case column, and a length column. And if I run this, you can see that I've added all of these columns and I've computed them really in memory. If I do d.collect, you can see that I haven't changed anything in my actual table. So this is the way that you can start iterating and working with queries to be able to refine how you actually want to compute your columns in your database, the ones that you actually want to save and store for later. Now, let's say that I settle on a function. I want to do lowercase. So I'm going to add that as a computed column. I can run that once. And if I use d.collect, you can see that I've actually added it to my database. So now we're really cooking, but you might be thinking, Allison, I really don't want to have to experiment here with a select and a collect, and then have to come down here and add a computed column and then do another collect. It's a lot of work. And I hear you. I think a really productive pattern for working interactively with pixel table is to save your expressions. So here I'm creating a new expression called swap case. I'm calling it swap expression. And I'm going to use d.text as the input. And I'm going to apply the Python operator swap case. So what this does is it converts lowercase to uppercase and uppercase to lowercase. So if I run this, it just creates the expression. But then I can test it right away within a select call. So here I'm doing d.select. I'm putting d.text in here so you can see it side by side. And I'm adding a new column called swapped. And I'm using my expression. I'm just going to show you the first row at first. This is actually doing a collect for me. I can do collect instead. I also don't have to have a variable name here. I can just use swap expression. So I can just see really quickly exactly what the output is and test it before actually making changes and committing them to my database. If I look at d.collect, you can see that I haven't made any changes here at all. But let's say I want to commit to it. I want to add it. So I'm going to do an add a computed column. I'm going to create this new variable called swapped. I can do that once. And if I do d.collect, you can see that it's in there. And it's in there forevermore. So that I can work with it, I can share it, and I can come back to it later. So I'll leave you with some lyrics that Dolly Parton herself may have written. We started with loading in our data. We used select to be able to build up an interactive query. We iterated on it. We changed it by actually saving it as an expression. And then we added it to a computed column. And then now it's possible for you to share it. So you can sleep soundly at night, but also share it, work with it later, come back to it. I hope this helps get you started with Pixel Table and gives you a really good development pattern for being able to work interactively with multimodal data and to save it in a persistent way that you can actually come back to and rely on.